Making sure you properly record your audio in GarageBand can be the difference between an okay project and a fantastic one. Whether you're just getting started or are looking for a quick refresher, in this video I'll share some tips that will make sure you record great sounding audio every single time. Before you even start recording in GarageBand, it's a good idea to make sure you have your project set up correctly. GarageBand allows you to choose from a number of project templates that can help you get started quickly and easily. Each of these templates preloads a selection of tracks within a project specific to the one you choose. So for example, the Amp Collection opens a project with different guitar audio tracks already set up. Alternatively, you can choose to open an empty project, allowing you to build your project from scratch. Personally, I always start with an empty project when beginning a new project. For me, it's better to start with a clean slate, rather than trying to work around already pre-existing tracks. The details menu at the bottom of this window allows you to further adjust the settings of your project. If you're not sure the exact tempo of the project you're going to create, then bear in mind you can change it at any time along with other parameters from GarageBand's main workspace once you've opened your project proper. If you're planning to record in GarageBand using equipment like a USB microphone, MIDI controller or audio interface, you can select it as your input device here. You can also select other output sources like studio monitors via an audio interface, for example, here too. Again, you'll need to have these hooked up before they become selectable. Once you're happy, hit choose and your new project will open. GarageBand gives you several options when it comes to what type of track to record into. If you're using GarageBand's musical typing feature or a MIDI controller to play the dozens of inbuilt instrument sounds, select the software instrument track. Recording using an external microphone, guitar or bass, select the audio track that matches what you plan to record. Adding a drummer track will create 16 bars of automatically generated rhythm section for you to play along with or adjust to fit your project. Before we go any further, if you're finding this video helpful, then please give that like button a little. I really appreciate it. If you plan to record real audio in your project, whether that's acoustic guitars, vocals or whatever, you might want to connect some external audio gear to your Mac. While it's true that most Macs come with a microphone built in, the quality is less than ideal if you want your project to sound as good and professional as possible. For better results, you do have a few options when it comes to gear. The easiest way to start recording high quality audio is with a USB microphone. Requiring you to simply attach it to your Mac via a USB cable, USB microphones like this blue snowball are plug and play. Setting up is dead easy as GarageBand will recognise when you attach your USB microphone, automatically setting it as your project's input source. Hooking up an audio interface to your Mac gives you a ton of flexibility. Interfaces like this Focusrite Scarlett Solo have line slash mic instrument inputs as well as 48 volt phantom power, which allows you to use studio quality microphones in your GarageBand projects. Just like with USB microphones, GarageBand will recognise when you have an interface attached. It's worth taking a second to check GarageBand settings before you hit record. Making sure everything is set up how you want it to be can save you some serious headaches further down the line. You can open GarageBand's preferences menu from the GarageBand menu in the toolbar at the top of your screen or by using the keyboard shortcut on screen. 
under the general tab, you'll find software instrument settings that allow you to change how your performances will be captured when recording over existing regions. This menu allows you to select whether your software instrument recordings will replace subsequent recordings. or merge with them when recording in the same place. The second lets you choose whether recordings with the cycle region will create separate takes. or be merged together. You can check and change your input slash output settings in the audio MIDI tab. Audio recording resolution is set to 24 bit by default and I would recommend you stick with it. If unchecked, your projects will be recorded in 16-bit resolution that does result in smaller file sizes while exporting, but negatively affects the sound quality a wee bit. While not the most exciting process in the world, taking the time to tune up any instruments you may plan to record will make sure your recordings sound their best. GarageBand's built-in tuner will work great whether you're micing up your instrument or inputting it directly. Open the tuner by clicking on the tuner icon here. GarageBand's tuner will pick up any notes played into your attached mic and display how in or out of tune the instrument is. Right next door to the tuner are the count in and metronome buttons. Turning the count in feature on gives you a one or two bar count in before recording begins. You can change the length of the count in by clicking record in the toolbar and hovering over count in. Activating the metronome will play a click track to the tempo specified when setting up your project. You can change the sound of the metronome by heading to the metronome tab in GarageBand's preferences. It's worth noting that you can turn the metronome off at any time while recording or when playing back your project by clicking the button again. The last thing you need to do before hitting record is to make sure that your recording levels are properly set. If turned up too high, your recorded audio may be too loud and result in a distorted sound. This is called clipping. Too quiet and you'll run into problems matching volume with the rest of your project and when applying effects like compression when you come to mix your project. To set your recording level, make sure the track you're working with is selected and open GarageBand's Smart Controls. Open Smart Controls by clicking the small dial icon in the top corner of the GarageBand window or using this keyboard shortcut. You can adjust your track's input volume using the mark slider or check the automatic level control box to have GarageBand set the level for you. Bear in mind if you have an audio interface attached to your Mac, that will govern each track's input level.
Now that you know how to record some cracking audio, watch this playlist next for some tips on how to mix your recorded tracks.